Hello everybody, my name is Kyle and welcome to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna bring back Callie and she's gonna talk, what, hold on a second. Uh, Callie Vontanina. Who are you? Uh, yeah, she, she's not gonna be able to make it to the interview today. Uh, she's my white supremacist cousin and she's actually at a re-education camp for her white supremacist views. Um, I'm actually Miss Luna activist teacher here, gonna be clarifying some things for you because I know that you are a racist, Kyle, and you do need some some help. Um, so Luna, huh? So, um, so okay. Well, since we're going live, I gotta just play along with this. So um, I'm assuming that Callie's fine. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I, 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 first of all, I'm feeling very offended by the fact that you are in a shirt that's very racist. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit triggered by that. Oh my goodness, I, I can't believe you're wearing that. It's just. Uh, really, really awful that you would, oh, my, uh, I need to take a moment to breathe here. And I also, uh, I'm, I'm wearing so a mask to protect myself from you. You're, 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 you could, uh, you're not wearing a mask and that's very dangerous. And so just to make I'm it inside. that I'm wearing this mask so that I am protected from COVID and I don't die in this interview. Um, I just want to clarify some things about critical race theory. You, 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 uh, black faces of white supremacy keep speaking against critical race theory, and it's actually the best thing for America and for America's kids. We solve racism with racism. That's that's uh, what important that we need to solve racism with racism. That, that, that tends to make sense, I think. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I, t I teach it in my fourth grade class. My students learn about white privilege and about intersectionality and hegemony and implicit bias and inherent racism, all very important things for my fourth graders. We actually take more time on critical race theory than on math, you know, which of course is a white construct. Math is a white construct. So we actually do a lot of work on uh, our, ourselves and making sure that we are acknowledging our implicit biases. And I also make sure that I give more voice to my black students because they are oppressed. I do have one question for you. How do you quantify race? Is it uh, skin tone or is there a level of melanism or DNA or um, it's, it's to identify as so if you are indigenous or let's say you you have a well your one forty second hotep. Well, like me, I'm one forty second hotep, so I'm definitely indigenous. I, I identify as an indigenous person. So um, when a child comes into my class, if they identify themselves as a minority, then I treat them as so. Oh, okay. So for today I'm identifying as a turnip. Is that okay with you? Oh, uh, oh, that's fine with me. Is that your preferred pronoun? I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't use that from the beginning. I actually didn't share my preferred pronouns. I have several. Right now, I'm going by she/her. I know that'll make it a little better for you. I know you, you, uh, uh, you right wingers don't know how to use pronouns, but yeah, I'm going by she/her currently. I do also use they/them, and I also use the pronoun dragon self, but that's usually during my menstrual cycle. Well, I, I, I go by it or or or, or um or bitter. Okay, two. well I will make an effort to use your correct preferred pronoun. And if I don't use it correctly, uh, I will I will certainly do my apologies to you ahead of time and I, I will make my and I would like you to do the same for me. It's it's you know actually grammatically correct to call me they when I prefer that. So just make make sure you keep that in mind. My preferred pronouns are very important. We got to make sure I always have my students share their preferred pronouns too. In fact, we have preferred pronoun they, and I, I, I I've had some students actually identify as it. That's a wonderful pronoun. Pronoun. I we we need that. So uh, yeah. Anyways, oh, critical yeah. race theory is super important. Um, yeah. I have my students do a privilege quiz. So. On the fifth day of class, we I have all the students share very personal information about their gender, their sexuality, um, what what race they identify as it. And I rank all my students by privilege. It's very good for me to know this. But then I can the kids that are, you know, white privilege. I don't give them as much time to speak in class and stuff like that. And you know, the black uh, BIPOC kids, I actually give them more answers because it's hard for them to do some of the work in our class. So I'll give them more answers to make it more equitable. Wow, you've got it down. I'm taking notes here. So Yes, uh, well, I'm glad I'm here to clarify this. I mean, I know you are the black face of white supremacy. So I got to make sure that, you know, you are being educated 
on how horrible it is that these people are, these, these right wingers are trying to stop critical race theory. I mean, it's just ridiculous. They are so absurd and they're so misinformed. You know, they only get their information from Fox News or Alex Jones. So, yeah. That's right, Miss Mams. And we, I, we happens to be in uh, oh. Black History Month, so I happens to be. Oh, yo, black, I yeah, happen to be yo bitter. It. It's very important. We need to make sure that we're spending more time on Black History Month than any other history in America. And I also put up posters in my classroom for Black History Month. We have a giant uh, poster of George Floyd. I've had, I've actually been <laughs> asking my my uh, school district to erect a statue of George Floyd in the front of our campus. Um, they're still giving me pushback on that because they're so racist. But I do think that kids need to be reminded every day of George Floyd. And um, also, we, we like to have uh, posters of Black Lives Matter posters. And of course, I love my Black Educators Matter mask. In fact, I matter more than the polyamorous indigenous amputee on campus. I am the most important thing on campus, a Black educator. And I'd like to point that out to my students. So, uh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, actually, uh, Col Collie just walked in the door. I guess she just got done with her re-education. <laughs> really, well, bring, bring her in. I want to talk to her. I really her. hope that she doesn't uh, uh, um, undo the great work that I'm doing in you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, basically confess your sins of racism the next time I see you, Kyle. Yes, ma'am. Um, I mean, um, yes, um, Miss Dragon Lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make sure you use my preferred pronoun. It's currently now Dragon Self, so... Uh, Drag yeah, sure you. My apologies. Okay, well, it was very nice to meet you, uh, Kyle. It will be a wonderful time to meet with you another time, and I would like to come back onto your show. I know you no. have a right wing no. conspiracy theorists who watch your show, so I just want to make sure that they know the truth because they are so misinformed and they just follow fake news and they worship Donald Trump and they're in a Trump cult. So I got to make sure I get on here and educate you guys on what's correct in society or um i'm basically your pre-education to your re-education camp so please make sure you have me back on kyle you're serving a per an important role a absolutely absolutely all right well i would say god bless but i don't believe in god so i'll just leave it at that i'll, we'll I'll, pray I'll for you. Greet, greet you in an ancient greeting an african ancient greeting of otap and uh, I, I acknowledge the God in you, Kyle, and I hope that you are really making sure that you're teaching your children that black people are more important than any other person on this earth right now. And make sure you're honoring your ancestors. So, um, yeah, have a great rest of your day, Kyle. Polly's actually right over here. Well, please uh, bring her on. I'm, yeah. I'm really getting nauseated. Oh, well, that's a, a reaction from a white supremacist, what I would expect. <laughs> So bye, KKK Kyle. <sighs> KK. What in the world was that? I'm, hey, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for that. This is live television. You have to do what you have to do. You can't, the show keeps going. You have, you have to keep going. So uh, hopefully, Callie will come in here and explain what the heck happened here. I mean, uh, what, what was that? Uh, I am so sorry. My crazy cousin was over here and she actually locked me inside of my bathroom. And I had to bang on the door. Finally, my husband let me out. So I'm so sorry, Kyle. She's a nut. She's a total left wing. She's uh, been brainwashed. And, um, you know, we, we have, she, she won't even meet with me because, of course, you know, I don't wear a mask. But she decided to come over here and hijack my message. But I was trying to push you into a bathroom and locking the door, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she's gone now. Um, I kicked her out of my house. I hope, hopefully, she won't come back because oh, so. she's a nut. But yeah, well, I had, I had to keep going because it was live television. So I had to keep going. So <laughs> and speaking of live television, you've been all over television, haven't you? Yeah, I actually recently had an appearance on Fox News, um, an unexpected appearance. I, I was contacted. I just want to share that I was, you know, I've done a lot of speaking against critical race theory. I'm a former public school teacher of 15 years and I was... Speaking, I've been doing a lot of speaking against critical race theory and exposing the lessons at my school that had critical race theory in them explicitly because the mainstream media, CNN, MSNBC, is telling the American people that critical race theory is not in our schools, and that's such a lie. It is It is in our schools, and they're lying to you. Um, and I um, actually prayed the night before because I've been receiving a lot of persecution, Kyle. You follow me on Instagram and on Facebook, and you see the kind of messages I get. It's It's... 
it's pretty, I mean, it's not just, oh, you're stupid or it's like the most, they're trying to like, I get a lot of hate. And sometimes it does get to me, especially when I get it from my own family. And I was having a particularly hard night because I received um, uh, some, you know, negative messages from one of my family members who's left leaning. And I just prayed to God. I was like, God, if you want me to continue this fight, if you want me to continue to speak out against critical race theory, despite the persecution that I'm receiving, that may be hard, but you get me through it. Please have me go have this be make national news. The next day I was contacted by Fox News to be on the <laughs> Angle. And God. Newsmax. And Newsmax. I didn't realize news, I didn't know Newsmax. I knew uh, yeah, I will be on, I will be on Newsmax tomorrow. So um, that was like, I mean, I don't know how much better of a sign do you need because a Laura Ingram, she's been doing a lot of work about the critical race theory. That's actually uh, um, it, dear to her heart because she has kids and she's even um, seen it thinking in her own in her own child's schools. So I just uh, it just was really a confirmation that this is not this is not a fight against, you know, left or right. It's a fight against, of good and evil. It is evil. The Bible says that we are that that God that we judge man based on the outward appearance, but God judges man on the heart only. That's in First Samuel, and what we're doing is teaching our kids to just look at race first and to identify themselves and others based only on their race and putting labels on people based on their race. And it's just it's racism. I mean, that's the best way to put it. It's racism, and we are individuals, and it's and to to apply guilt or to apply victimhood to the collective and then teaching it to our kids. It's, it's disgusting stuff. It really is. And uh, for the audience to uh, understand what's going on, you know, we had some fun there in the beginning, obviously, but you know, we talked earlier. I'm actually Luna. <laughs> I like to admit it because some people still think she's That is true. Yeah. That is, that, that is true. Because, because, because the, because these teachers have become so, um, in, uh, Unfortunately, our public school teachers are very left leaning. I would, I think it's like something like eighty percent, and um, our our um, our teachers unions are also very. They're basically Democrat Party sponsors, the teachers unions, and um, so I, I think it's very sad that people think that Luna is real. This character that I came up with, that I actually received her mask. It says Black Educators Matter. I don't know where I put it, but I actually received that mask in a gift from my district. Uh, my superintendent emailed me about a gift that parents had assembled for Black teachers. And in that gift, there was a Black Educators Matter mask. And the idea that a teacher would wear that in front of their students, not only is it a political statement, but it's also, you know, what if a white teacher had worn a white Educators Matter mask? That's not even, a, that's, of course, that's not allowed. Sure. You know, and, and it's a political statement. It's show, showing my students that I support the defund the police movement, the abolish the police movement, because Black Lives Matter is not Black Lives Matter. It's actually the defund the police, abolish the police movement. And that's not I do not support that. And so to put that mask on or to show my students that I have a Black Lives Matter poster in my classroom, which they're doing across in 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 um in schools, public schools across the nation, they're putting up Black Lives Matter stuff, especially during Black History Month. You're basically telling your students you support the defund the police and the abolish the police movement because Black Lives Matter has called to abolish the police. That is not a that is not an exaggeration. It's on their website. They do not want police. And that is not something that I think is good for America right now. We need to be supporting our police officers. Absolutely, hundred percent. And uh, to the, to your to your comedy, I think some of the best things you can do is to take their take their crazy stuff and bring it to logical conclusion. Yeah. And that's what you do. I mean, what you're saying and what you mentioned in your, in your the persecution, really, what you're receiving is persecution. It's out, out of control. And um, and so I think that's what you're actually saying that, but you're saying it in more of a humorous manner. But those things you're saying is exactly oh, what yeah. you're getting, right? I actually get it. I get a lot of my inspiration for Luna from comments I get from people that are left leaning. Like, I mean, you can't make not, that stuff up. Yeah. I just deliver it with comedic timing. That's all. <laughs> sure, exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's really bad. And, and the thing about critical race theory is that the black lives matter movement, you know, when we saw the, the riots, which it's interesting how this in the year of 2021, they just disappeared. Did you hear about any, any incident of a black man, unarmed black man being um, shot by the police in 2020, I mean, 2021, it was gone from the news. But 2020, every 
they were even rehashing old stories from like years before just to keep them all gaslighted and angry. And we saw them go out and for three weeks, they were just wreaking havoc on American cities across the nation, burning buildings down, throwing 700 cops got injured, violently injured during those protests, bricks thrown at them. I mean, I'll never forget seeing the image of a brick th being thrown at a cop horse and breaking its nose. And so critical race theory is actually what created Black Lives Matter movement because, and all the violence, because what they're doing is they're applying guilt to the collective. Yep. So instead of just yep. holding individuals account accountable, individual cops or individual racists, it's now, oh, all cops are bad. All police officers are bad. And it's absolutely, and that's why they felt justified in burning down precincts and abusing police officers that were just there to try and protect businesses that didn't have anything to do with George Floyd. So what they're, that's what critical race theory does is it applies guilt to the collective. So therefore all white people have white privilege. All white people have inherent racism. All black and minorities are being affected because of the color of their skin, no matter where they go or where, the, where they're at, they're being persecuted or victimized because of their skin color. When in reality, what's on the books in America is you actually get privileges because of the color of your skin when you're a minority. I got a $40,000 scholarship to um, a UC because of the color of my skin. I got mm -hmm. contacted by um, an African-American group on campus and they were like, we have this color scholarship available. It's only for black students. And it's a $40,000 scholarship. You can't do that as a white student. You can't no. get, a, you can't get a, call, a scholarship for being white in America right now. You know, we have Asian students that actually have to hide their identity when they go, when they apply to college campuses because they don't want to be discriminated against for being Asian. Correct. So. It, this idea that that you know there's all this white privilege everywhere and that America is just built to just benefit the white man and yes we have a racist past but I'm not going to deny that but that this idea that we need to apply guilt to the collective and to and to to start putting that guilt on our children our white children and putting that victimhood and teaching them that victimhood to our children is absolutely evil it's evil that's the best way to put it Absolutely, 100%. And um, I think that starts with the 1619 Project, yep. so even, even with, which, which, by the way, goes way back to even the 60s. And so, you know, um, you know, there's that movie Soul Man where the guy is a white guy. He actually painted his face black so he could go to a black university, get a scholarship, minority <laughs> scholarship. Yep. Um, so, I mean, that's something that's been creeping in our culture. But now it's, it's all in your face now. So, so and what, they're, what they're leaving out is that um, that. You know, for example, they leave out the history of the Cherokee and how they, at, at their peak, owned 2,500 uh, black <clears throat> slaves, you know? And in fact, they didn't even um, free their slaves when the 13th Amendment came out. You know, the wow. Trail of Tears actually included many of their slaves were with them during that time. And they also did not include the ancestors of their slaves that they owned in tribal membership. But you won't hear that in these curriculums. You would you know? not. And in fact, if you if uh, I watched this uh, about uh, last year, Ken Burns, one of the most famous directors in the history of, of, of this country, had a movie called had a series called um, uh, The West. And in The West, in the first series, there's a, a Native American woman talking about the um, the Native American slave trade. It's a one sentence she mentions, but she said we did that, and that and this whole um, notion of the noble savage is a total myth, and uh, how various different groups conquered each other for hundreds of years. And, you know, so it's, it's, it's a narrative that they're putting forth to put the, the honest on white people. So like you said, the collective guilt can get everybody up in, up in arms. Yep. Yes, it is. And so I, you know, even though I'm blowing the whistle on all of this stuff, cause it's garbage and it's not even just what, I mean, our student, our kids are being attacked at so many angles. They're being taught that they're multiple genders. Did you get taught that when you were in elementary school, Kyle, that there's multiple no. genders? No. Were, were, did you even know about they them pronouns and no. uh, exactly did you know about non-binary and no. having um you know these pronouns where you could say you're it or a dragon self or i just had someone who was said thinks they're a wolf you know we just saw a video i just saw a video about that no we did not have that when we were kids you know and what's happening in education did you have to wear a mask during flu season you know when all the kids were getting sick during winter time and you know there was I mean, as a teacher, I know there's germs everywhere. Did we make all the kids wear masks all day, these germ-filled masks, and have to take breaks to breathe? We had chicken pox parties. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm talking about? 
they're they're attacking our children on all angles and i don't want to just expose this stuff but i also want to offer solutions and yeah, let's talk actually, about that. i actually have three for the american people and um the first one is to academic act to fight for academic transparency laws so what that means is that you um that the school district is required to put all materials that they are teaching that your child online for you to see that's something that I, it's sad that we even have to fight to do but what's happening right now is because the left has wised up to the fact that we're waking up about critical race theory they're starting to hide it and getting rid of um the term but they still have it in the curriculum so with academic transparency laws we can find it again right um we Perfect. parents should know what's being taught to their child and the fact that we have to fight for that is pretty sad so there's academic transparency laws and then um school choice is super super important. So that means that you when you are in a state that has school choice, you can apply the dollars that you paid in taxes to the school of your choice. And the fact that the left or Democrat party does not fight for school choice just shows how they really don't care about minority children because they just want them to stay in a failing school and not give that parent a choice to put them in one that is better, which makes such a difference in a child's life. So make sure you're advocating for school choice, but the best option is to pull your child from a public school and hit them where it hurts because they are paid per pupil. So when you have a child, when you pull your child from a public school, they don't get the money. And um I'm actually opening up my own school which is going to be an online academy. It's called Exodus Institute. You can um look up thinkexodus.org. dot org. thinkexodus.org. It's going to be an online school. I'm offering a K through 12 program fully accredited. My husband and I are doing it together. We both have masters in education and um we're basically going to be there for parents who want to pull their child from public school but don't necessarily want to be their child's sole teacher. You know, I mean parents are teaching their children every day. You're constantly teaching your child, but sometimes you want to be the you don't necessarily want to be the one to teach your child multiplication. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you'll you'll practice with them, but I don't really want to be I don't really want to have that. I'm not an expert, you know, and so we right. and we're going to be fully transparent to parents. All of our lessons will be for them to be able to see exactly what we're doing um because they're not our children, they're your child. And it's mm -hmm. an honor of me to be to be able to teach your child, but it's also very important for me to be transparent to you on what I am teaching your child because we have teachers across the nation that are that are teaching your child stuff that does not uh, align with your morals and values. And That's um we we will be also offering enrichment lessons for parents that already have a program or maybe they can't pull their kids from public school. So if you are in a place in your life where you can't pull your child from a public school, well you can come to thinkexodus.org and get for um and get enrichment lessons that undo some of the indoctrination. I mean, I could even say, "Hey, you know, during Christmas break, give give your child an incentive to complete some of our lessons so that you can undo some of the brainwashing they're getting in our in our in our schools and it, and they can undo it with an actual teacher. Um there's something to be said about when children sometimes children especially our teenagers they like to rebel against their parents but they will listen to their teachers and I've seen that over and over again as a public school teacher I'll tell parents like oh yeah your son he's great in class and he's doing all of his work and he's like really because he doesn't do that for me you know <laughs> and so to be able to give these lessons to you and to your child I mean give it give these lessons to your child from a teacher especially your teenagers and your middle schoolers um that undo some of the stuff cuz they're getting cuz they really do double down in middle school and high school yeah. um will be I think really helpful for for parents that they can say hey I have this lesson from a teacher where it goes into communism and how much it sucks like you know here take this lesson you're to learn about North Korea you know so yeah we just want to really want to be an option for parents that are wanting to pull their child from their school or at least undo some of the indoctrination their child is getting. Just to show you how creative Cali is. Can you tell the example which you tell your kids about you you do one day out of year we talk about the various like marxism and communism and you you make them go through an exercise. Do you remember what that talked me about that? Yes, I do try to keep my lessons interesting. That's the other thing about thinkexodus.org is we want we actually want our lessons to be so interesting that your child will be like, "Oh, I actually want to do this lesson," you know? Right. Because I don't think what's uh, that's the other thing is they've turned teaching and uh learning into torture. I mean they're just getting these kids to sit all day at a desk and have to wear a mask and there's it's not interesting and it's not fun. I mean it really isn't interesting to learn about hegemony and intersectionality and white privilege. Those are boring. Now on top of being 
stupid and right. evil. But um, yeah, I, I teach my students. I do a North Korea project. They love That's it. it. That's yeah, it. we learned about North Korea. And one of the lessons I do is about, you know, it's very, um, it's a very simple lesson, but it's just a, it's a object lesson where I have all my students turn their, bring their phones to the front of the room. And some of my students have brand new iPhones. Some of my students have, you know, no phone. And some of my students have, um, you know, like a, like a cracked iPhone five, you know? And so what I tell them is in capitalism, if you want to have a nice phone, you can work hard and you can have your nice phone. You know, you can go get a job. And I, a lot of my students that have like, cause I taught high school, a lot of my students that have the iPhone 12, they, they have a job and they pay for it themselves. And the students that don't have an iPhone, well, they don't want to work. They don't want to have a job and they don't want to, you know, get a phone. And that's that, that's your consequence, right? That you don't get to have as nice of things or in capitalism, if you invent a phone, that's even better than the iPhone 12, you're going to be a billionaire. You know, like, like that's what's, that's, what's amazing about America is that we can go from the bottom to the top. And the fact that these schools are trying to, to undo that in our kids and say, oh no, the American dream is not real. It's absolutely criminal. It's criminal. There is no place in the world where the American dream is more real, where you can go from the bottom to the top. That's why people are cl clamoring to come to America. And then I also teach them about socialism with the same phones. And I say, okay, well, with socialism, you with the iPhone 12, you need to give your you need to give your iPhone 12 to the kid that doesn't have a phone for 70 percent of the time. And then mm -hmm. you can use it for 30 percent of the time, because in socialism, it's usually the people that are wealthy get 70 percent of their taxes taken out for the collective. Right. And, and, and the kids are like, well, what's the point of having a nice phone? I'd rather be the one that doesn't have the phone at all. You know, and that, what that does is that totally brings down like the creativity and morale of a society when you're like, why do I do all this work and I get 70% of it taken away? You know, a lot of our greatest inventions that we are using is because of capitalism, because they know, you know, even a ke the ketchup, you know, ketchup that you eat with your fries, that's capitalism, because they know that the person that's inventing ketchup made, made sure it was perfect because they wanted to make sure they could make a lot of money with it, this product, you know, instead with socialism, the government owns it, you know, the government, it runs companies. So what's the point if you're yeah. going to have so much of it taken away and given to the collective? And then I tell them with communism, communism is, is the funnest one with our phones. I, I have, I take, I, I, I tell them, well, you know what, with communism, they really push for, for things to be very equal, equally distributed in society, right? We're all a collective. No one's going to be super rich. No one's going to be, well, they promise that no one's going to be super poor. Right. But it usually ends up everyone is, you know, the, yeah. so I tell them, okay, so I have this government issued flip phone and I show them my mom's old flip phone that she had and I'm like you guys can all get this for free and here's your government issued flip phone and and they're like and I hand it around I let them look at it and I'm like you guys will all get a free phone from the government and um and you only get access to this phone because you know we're giving it to you for free and we don't want you know there to be all of these people having iPhone 12s that's not very fair so here's your government issued flip phone because that's what it happens in communism is is you know we can't trust man we can't trust man to to have everything and redistribute it like are you kidding me man fails on that they they will never be trusted to have everything and redistribute you know and so, um, and then I say, but, but your, you know, your government, you, the people that are running this and a government is just a group of people, people that are right. pro communism are like, there actually isn't a government. It's us running it together. I'm like, yeah, that's a group of people. A government is just a group of people running things, you know? And so, uh, but, but the people that are actually doing the distributing, they have their iPhone 12s, you know? Um, they're like, okay, yeah, you guys all get your free phone, but we're going to get iPhone 12, which is exactly what happens in North Korea, where the leaders get to have all of the nice stuff, but the people, even though they get free, they get, they get the crap, you know? So it's a very powerful lesson for my students. It's very simple, but it's also, that's what happened. This is what it is. That is what it, it is, what it is. Capitalism isn't perfect, but it's sure better than socialism and communism. And, and to think that we can just switch America into a socialist country, you know what that would take? That would take blood. That would take, and they're okay with that. They're yeah. like, we need a revolution. We need to kill out all these capitalists. That's what I've heard from these young people, you know? And it's just, that's disgusting. Why do you guys, why do you guys think that's going to be a solution to one of the greatest countries that you could ever possibly be born in? You know, 
Like, so anyways, it's just ridiculous. And that's why I want to offer an alternative to parents because it's what's happening in our colleges. So think about how our colleges are super left leaning. Well, then now that's happening in our high schools and our middle schools. And it's just, they're just going younger and younger and younger. Yeah. It was very terrifying actually. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> one thing I've been part of is a group called wall builders and they talk about the, the history of this country. And it's amazing what we're not taught. I don't have time to get into it now. But I'm doing a series with a group called Red Liberty Media. And I'm doing these excerpts for like five or six minutes about Liberty's heroes and about how we got to where we are. And Black History Month is coming up, and there's so much that we're not told about in Black history. You hear about 1619, but they don't talk to you about 1638, 39 with Plymouth, where then it was actually they actually banned slavery. And if you were caught owning a slave, you were like put to death. You know, they don't talk about that kind of stuff, you know, but you know, the foundings of people prior to the uh, 1776 era. And so just so much that we're not told about and how black history has been removed by people like Woodrow Wilson from the textbook completely to have a crime of omission so that we have that gap so you can put stuff in like the crap you just mentioned. Yep, exactly. And, you know, it is a rewriting of history. They, they always accuse the right of rewriting history. Well, now they are doing it. And they're really trying. The reason why they're pushing so hard to label America and its founding as white supremacist is they want to have an excuse to get rid of the Constitution. They want to have an excuse to say the Constitution was written by white supremacists and therefore we need to cancel the Constitution and start over with what? Their weird, woke crap. And it's going to ruin it. And and, and you know what? They do these things where they they really say sound nice. I used to be on the left. I was very much a Democrat. I loved Obama. And I probably would be supporting Bernie now if I was still on the left because I usually tend towards you know, just being really passionate about whatever I'm into. And um, and I used to be there. I know what it's like to feel like that side is the side with the solutions. But then I started noticing a pattern of they would say a problem and then they would propose a solution that would only make it worse. And that's what they are doing with critical race theory. They're saying critical race theory is going to solve racism in America or at least help stop it. And it's going to reeducate our kids to not be racist. Well, guess what it's producing? It's producing more racism. More racism, more than I've ever seen in my lifetime. And it's really sad. It really is. 100%. Mm-hmm. Well, Callie, you know what? I think the program that you uh, mentioned, uh, can you talk about your uh, your school again, you know, the, the website, and uh, what we can look forward to in terms of its um, beginning? And you're taking um, you're taking enrollment yet? Or are you taking emails? Or Yes, we are. We If you go to thinkexodus.org, you can sign up for our mailing list. We are hoping to launch by mid-March. Um, it's an, an incredible amount of work, but we are getting it done. And um, we really just want as many parents as possible to know about it. We want to make it as accessible to parents as possible. And um, like I said, it's going to be two programs. We're going to offer a fully accredited K through 12 program. So if you are wanting to get your, you know, if you have a high schooler who wants to graduate and move on to college, we can do that. You know, wow. and and also we will be offering enrichment lessons that will be taught by Joshua, my husband, and myself, and we will be doing the lessons on demand. So it can be at any oh. time that you want. You can put put us on and have us do a lesson, and that your student will have assignments, and we will grade them and and um, oh, give them wow. feedback on it. So it's it's going to be wow. a lot of work, and there's also a place for people to donate if they do want to donate to our to our because we want to do a huge marketing campaign and we're really trying to come correct we don't want a janky product we we want to really make sure that um, people are impressed with what they're receiving and just really grateful that wow here's some teachers they're going to teach my that are going to teach my students to critically think and educate them not indoctrinate them so um and also i just i i was a reading tutor for five years while i was a teacher and i also um, you know, did a lot of work with students that have learning disabilities and stuff like that. So I always try to make sure that my lessons are very engaging for, you know, the majority of like most child, most children will, will enjoy the lessons that we give them on, um, Exodus Institute. That is so wonderful. I remember when you first told me that and I just got so excited mm-hmm. and I've been privy to some of the things going on. on, on oh yeah. Under- Kyle's been actually helping us with our website. So I want to thank you for that. He actually gave us a lot of, um, a lot of tips in the beginning on how to work on our on our website and get it. We really wanted to have a, you know, you'll go to these these homeschool groups. And I'm not I'm not trying to bag on them, but they're a little bit like cottagey, you know, like I'm the homeschool mom and we're learning to knit. Not that there's anything wrong with knitting, but we also wanted to make it kind of cool 
you know, we sure. really wanted to come fresh. And so it's been really helpful to work with you on that and just get some of your advice. And also he's been helping us with some of the images that we have on our site and stuff like that. So well, I was not looking for a plug at all. Seriously. I mean, it's not looking for a plug. I appreciate that. I I, just yeah, but I want to make sure, you know, you, you're, you've been, you're, been a, you're not just a podcaster. You're also a friend of ours and we just I, really appreciate your support. And I think, you know, the mat and the amount of hate we get, we yeah. black, um, non left wingers when we don't tap dance for the left, we get so much hate. So it's so important. Like you're such an important brother to me throughout all of this. I really appreciate that. And look for transparency. We pray together. Your husband's awesome. He's fantastic. I love him. Yeah. And uh, my wife loves you. And <laughs> I, I, I'm getting, I don't want to tear up on the right on the air. So, <laughs> but um, looking so much forward to this Callie. And uh, if you can stick around for one second, I'm going to, Give some something about the uh, website. I'm gonna tell you about sure. it quickly. Um, but but all the I'm a, there's a, a fantastic. I gotta talk about this just a little bit. There's a fantastic documentary that was on you that I'm gonna put in the description below. Yeah. As well as our first interview, which tells more about you and your history and your, your story, your your testimony, and also of course the link to uh, Think Exodus and all that. Um, but talk to me a little bit about this fabulous uh, documentary. I'll give you the last word on that. Um, yeah, I was at Goldwater Institute, and that's actually the, the institute that is fighting for academic transparency laws. So they're a wonderful um, organization. They're a team of lawyers that um, advocate for freedom. That's the best way to put them. And they actually decided to produce a video with my story about um, exposing critical race theory in my district as a public school teacher. And they just took a really beautiful angle. I had no idea it was going to be so well done. I'm really impressed with what they did and they really did honor my story. Um, and I should just share a bit about some personal things I've been through and also, you know, just how critical race theory is just so damaging to society. And so, yeah, I, I definitely recommend people getting, getting a look at it at the video and um, just seeing a, pr a fresh perspective. Cause I think we're hearing a lot about critical race theory. And I also want to tell people that, and maybe you can share this as well, but I wrote a guide against critical race theory for Blexit. Which is yeah, let's um, talk about that a little bit, yeah. Yeah, which is Candace Owens and um, Brandon Tatum's organization, Blexit. And it's a 25-page parent and teacher guide about critical race theory. Um, I broke down what it is, what it looks like, what the lessons look like. I also put some counter lessons in it. Um, and I and yeah, there's also option um, in 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 it. There's also um, advice on what to do if there's critical race theory in your schools. And um, so that's you can find that on the Blexit website. There's a guide against critical race theory. It was totally labor, labor of love to write that. And I didn't think I, I could do it. I remember when I agreed to it, I was like, man, yeah, I don't know if I can do this. Like, even though God has given me so many tools to write this, especially being in a district that was the poster child for critical race theory. But I doubted myself. I think we all do that. And I especially, especially, especially considering my background. And I doubted myself. And I was like crying, like, oh, I can't get this done. And and I just prayed through the whole thing. And he really, God really helped me to write this um, uh, document, this 25 page guide against critical race theory. And um, it's in, it's at the Blexit site. I'll leave a link to that as well. And yeah. uh, Callie, again, just uh, one last, I'll give you last word, but just uh, close this out with where, where they can reach you, your, 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 your social media, where they can contact you and all that good stuff. Yeah, you can find me on social media at Kali Fontania. I'm on TikTok. I also do Luna activist videos on TikTok. You will find her and she's really fun. You will find her and she's really fun. I also have a couple other characters I do um, on my TikTok. That's a whole other story. But oh, that's so good. My favorite. So Luna's good. So good. good. And then I have um, Instagram, Kali Fontania. You, I also have um, Facebook, Kali Fontania, and hopefully when Truth Social comes out, I will be on that as well. But if you just look up my name, you will be able to find me on any of those mainstream. Um, I get a lot of censorship on there as well, though. They're, my accounts are very close to being shut down, but I, I always have a backup. But it's pretty crazy how much they don't want you speaking against this stuff. You know, they allow all kinds of deprivation on those platforms. I mean, when there's a lady that kills a cockroach with their breast on TikTok, you know, and yeah, it's pretty weird. Um, but that, and that's like a viral video. But when I share about critical race theory, I get, you know, taken down and put in silence. So it's pretty lame to be on those platforms, but I also have had private messages from kids, from high schoolers, cause they're, that's where they are. That's where they are. Yeah. Telling me, thank you. Telling me I want to go to your school. So I will never be silenced. I will never stop speaking up. So if you guys want to follow me on any of those 
sites, please find me there. Awesome. So wonderful. Again, Callie, every, I just, I love you and Josh so mm -hmm. much. And, uh, be in contact. I can't wait to enroll my kid in that and, uh, looking, looking so forward to it. Oh, awesome. Kyle. It's Thank so you so nice. much. Uh, yeah. It's so nice to be back on your show. Awesome. Anytime. Open door policy. Anytime. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. That's that. That's Kali Fontania. I hope I said that right. And uh, if you like what we do in this channel, please like and share and, uh, you know, check out her stuff. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see everybody in the next video. God bless you. God bless.